All right, we are live. Sometimes it takes a second. Hello, hello. Hi. All right, let's make sure we're live because sometimes it takes a second. I think we're good. I think we're good. Yay. Cool. So we're here at our historical Hellion slideshow. We're talking about a G. Devro. Is that how you pronounce her last name? Devro? Yeah, mm -hmm. I think so. Yeah. Okay. I, this whole time I thought I was pronouncing her name wrong. <laughs> Uh, we read A Knight in Shining Armor, so we'll talk about it, um, and I'll let the ladies introduce themselves. Go ahead, Jessica. I'm Jessica from Peace Out Books. Are we sharing our rating? Yeah, go ahead. No? Oh, okay. Well, I just finished it an hour ago, so I am really conflicted um, <laughs> because the first half was so boring, but then once I traveled back in time, it was like really picking up, so I would say maybe four stars. Like it was an emotional roller coaster and it felt very much like the other time traveling one we read. So uh, which is the other time traveling one you went away? Were you read? The Beatrice Small book? What was it called? Yeah. Moment in time? A moment in time, yes. It felt like very much like that, especially the ending. I was like, this is just like exactly like that ending. Like, I don't know. So we'll talk about it. which one which one came first? Yeah, I don't know. I assume Beatrice Small did. Yeah, that one was an older one for sure. Well, this is 89. Let me look. Yeah, this one's pretty old still. Yeah. I'll check it out. Okay. Someone else can go there while I look. <laughs> go ahead, Lacey. Go, Lacey. All right. Uh, well, I'm Lacey from Lacey Book Lovers. I am on my phone right now, so that's why I have my screen really small. But I read this one. Uh, late last year for like the collab video that we all did for reading historical romances that came out the year mm -hmm. that we were no sorry not that one another one where I read like beloved old school historical romances mm -hmm. and I read this one and I give it three stars because they the whole like the first half being really boring and then the second half picking up but it wasn't enough to make me really love it either mm -hmm. okay so I'm Alicia, Alicia underscore reads. I read this book in 1995, <laughs> 1995, when I was 16. So I have like the, you know, 1998 or 1989, like original hardcover. Um, I have not reread this for probably like 10 years. And so when I reread it, I did think there were things that were boring. And we could like talk about that because I think as you're reading it, you're like, oh my God, if they just could have Googled, like this <laughs> all could have been over, right? <laughs> She's like, we have to go to the library and then we have to take a train to like talk to the person at the castle. And it's like, if there was a Google and like a Wikipedia and a FaceTime, this whole half of the first half of the book would be over. <laughs> like, yeah. yeah, it'd be like 20 pages. Yeah, it would <laughs> never have happened. So, you know, reading it now, I do see like how it could be boring in the beginning. But for me, it's like a very sentimental, like emotional read. So like even on this reread, it was like a four and a half just because I have that like emotion attached to it more than more than necessarily like looking at it as this amazing book. So, yeah. What did you think, Samantha? Um, so I felt this kind of the same way. I thought the beginning was pretty boring and I was like, mm, like we're not really going anywhere. Our heroine seemed kind of, I don't, I don't want to say weak because that's so mean, but she seemed kind of whiny, a little yeah, boring. Too. <laughs> <laughs> so I was like, she's not my favorite heroine, but then the ending and like the middle, it really did pick up. So I'm going mm -hmm. between like maybe a three star or four star read because I did enjoy the ending. It really was just the beginning that could have been shorter. Mm -hmm. And I did finish it like two hours ago. So yeah, I'm toggling between like a three or four star. I'm not sure yet. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. yeah she, she, she is like purposely supposed to be a weak her heroine. I mm -hmm. want to say like the author made her, you know, really submissive to that awful boyfriend just to make us sympathize with her I guess but at the same time it is still really frustrating to read yes and I think she had to be that way though to have that like character Gross. art yeah. of like yeah. realizing like I am worth it yeah and I should ask for these things so I I feel like she had to be like that kind of like what's the like 
the rug, you know, like that they like she gets trod on kind of doormat. Doormat. Yeah. (laughs) She had to be that at the beginning in order to be able to be like, okay, uh, like now that we're through all this and I've gone through the middle ages and I lived in a time where there was no toilet paper and, you know, for this grand love. And then at the end, okay, sorry. It's just like such my. (laughs) (laughs) No, go ahead. I love it. That's why I like. I liked the ending because the ending was romantic with like the love throughout time and the idea of soulmates. So it was well written in that aspect. I think it just maybe could have been like a hundred page shorter and taken out like a lot of more of the boring bits in the beginning. And I think if it was written today, it would have been like, let's Google this and let's Wikipedia and let's like, it would have taken out like that whole first half almost of them like, riding around this village trying to figure out where he came from, you know, because she could have just like looked it up on her phone. So um, the edition I read, oh. Mine doesn't, so I would like to know what this says. Yeah, mine does not either. Well, mine's a, mine's a reprint. Oh, yeah. So. Was it because like addiction? Like she's mentioned something about addiction, how she wanted oh. to liken the heroin with some something with addiction it wasn't actually like she wasn't addicted to anything but she wanted to liken that story to that oh it was easy to imagine douglas being swept away by a man with an alcoholic personality robert whitley was a successful man and on the surface he seemed like someone douglas could show to her family with pride yeah so it was basically saying like she was with someone that she felt like her family would Approved. Well, superficial reasons. Like she just yeah. really wanted to get married and have a family. And she was just that was... desperate. She didn't, yeah, she she didn't like that. him. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. Like she... Yeah. It was definitely wow. a feeling. Yeah. She didn't like, like him. Like it was just like he was there and he ticked all the boxes. More yeah. And the more. author's note, it says like that she felt inferior to her sisters. So she was like with that guy because it would make her seem like she was like worthy. I don't know. Interesting. He was he like literally like left her with nothing. Yes. Yeah. Like, no wallet or passport. And I was like, this guy. And the fact that he drags his daughter along his too. Daughter, yeah. The yeah. Bratty so daughter. obviously. I will I, say though, like like um Douglas, she got really annoyed that he always put his daughter first. Mm-hmm. But it's like, well, he kind of should, you know. Right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. They were yeah. just not a good pair <laughs> at all. Right. But I feel like folks from this time have very exaggerated characters to prove a point. So, like, he was just, like, overtly bad, and we could definitely tell that. And I'm like, would anybody really do this? I mean, maybe there are people out there like that. But, like, would anybody really do this to someone? Um, (laughs) I I hope not. I mean, well, because he's like, let's invite her. Look, I brought up my daughter along on our couple's trip. Like a Look, great first for I have, you. even though it's me and her. So we're gonna buy two hundred dollar meals, and you have to pay a hundred dollars, even though you only ate twenty dollars worth. I'm just like, no one can. I mean, maybe there there probably are people that let out there, but that's really annoying. <laughs> yeah, I really did want her to stick up like a little bit more for herself. And the one thing, so like this kind of, they never she never really explained the time travel. Like, it's like, oh, I just laid there and I prayed that a knight in shining armor showed up. So if I just, like, laid there and prayed for, like, a million dollars, would that have showed up? Like, (laughs) it was a very, like, there was no discussion of, like, the space-time continuum on how. Yeah, there was a magical element to it, like, (laughs) that's true. There was a little bit missing with that. Like, Mm -hmm. how this, how, how did this happen? Yeah. Like, I feel like that we were soulmates. It was meant to yeah. be. Yeah, it was like the right place, right time, right situation. Yeah. And it just worked. Yeah. yeah. I, I just, I did think like at the beginning when he, he, he adapted very well to like trying to figure out the 1980s, right? Like from coming from like 15, what, 1594 to adapting to like, okay, now there's a cars and there's this and there's this. And it's like, think anybody else would have been like what is happening well he now, said like, like he's down. a very education like centered guy mm-hmm. so he like loves learning so he just like 
took it all in stride. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I know. Really, it's probably easier to go to the future than going back into the past, yeah. I want to say. No, I feel like it would be harder because, like, if you go to the future and you see the technology, you're like, what is this witchcraft? <laughs> like, <laughs> Right, but it's, like, helpful technology. That's if you go back I don't know. I think like focus when they come out and they, like, are looking at the road. They're like, what is that? <laughs> Or when like when and she went back and gave her like a co a cold tablet or something like I can't believe that that woman oh, that much medicine in their purse for, for yeah. So yeah that woman had a lot in this tote bag she had a lot in this tote bag I yeah. I don't know where she thought she was going with this tote bag but there was a lot and who would just take that like who would just be like sure I'll take your tablet when you're sitting there with like right. leeches on your arms like this just that from not- your purse. <laughs> Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, it's always hard to explain unless there's a paranormal aspect to it. So someone actually asked me that. So Harriet was was reading it and she called me and she was like, is this a paranormal romance? And I was like, no, they never really explain how he and she like time travel. It just is. Like, yeah, yeah, there's, yeah, there's nothing. So, okay, you know what I wanted to mention? I was looking at the Goodreads reviews because I was trying to see, like, what other people thought of it. And a lot of people feel kind of the same way that the beginning was boring, and but the ending was more interesting. And it's more of a sentimental read because it's Jude Devereaux. Um, but they compared it to some type of movie. Where is my phone? Oh, Kate and Leopold? Yeah, I've never yeah. seen that. I don't know what that is. I don't know how similar it is to this book. It's very similar. Is is it Kate? Is it a Kate Winslet? Is or somebody's in it? Or Hugh Jackman's in it? Who's is in it Hugh Jackman? I haven't seen it in a really long time. I, I saw it in a really long time. Yeah. Is that one also time travel? It is. Yeah, yes. everyone was from medieval times, right? Yeah. Everyone was comparing it to this book. I don't think it was like a reenactment or anything. But yeah, I was like, huh, that's interesting. Yeah. Oh, I love Hugh Jackman. I can't believe I've never, it was. I've never watched it. Oh, y'all know. Y'all know. It's a good movie. I would recommend it. It's a good movie for sure. I'm going to have to watch it. I love Hugh Jackman. There's so many movies of his that are like my favorite. Yeah. And he's he's the one who does like, he's the time traveler in this one. Like she's the one who's in the whatever time period, like the 1990s or 2000s, whatever. It is. Oh, so it's reverse. Hmm. He comes forward for her, and I don't think she goes back, if I remember correctly. Okay. If I remember correctly. But I, I might be wrong. It's been a really long time. But I also, what that person said, I did not understand the parallel, because, like, she was friends with Lucy in the past. Yes. But, like, hated Gloria, and then the two Roberts were nothing alike. No. Wait, did we even meet the other Robert in the past? Wasn't Robert the the chick's husband that yeah. he was with on the table? Yeah. Yeah. I never saw him. I think he was just like a friend. So I felt that was very odd to make them parallels, mm-hmm. but maybe that was just to make the ending happen. Where oh look, and now Nicholas is actually in the past, in the in the present. Yeah. But, and know. then the guy like was a better person. He was like, oh, I'm sorry, we left you. I don't know why we did that, and like. Yeah, she somehow weird. like changed the past yeah. and he, like, it affected the future. personality to not be. Yeah. 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 Arabella. I was going to say Allegra. I don't think that is not the right name. Arabella is the right name. She's also very good at like stopping your allergies. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, did you like the ending though? I don't know if I was fully satisfied by that. I was yeah, okay. I definitely would have loved more from it. You know, like an actual romance of her with the the final guy but I still really liked it I was just swooning you know like all of the things that Nicholas was saying I was like oh that's so romantic yeah I thought he was really romantic in the end yes and like if this book was written now when she could have like googled this stuff maybe the last (laughs) hundred pages could have been Douglas with whatever his name was you know what I'm saying like she could have I can't even remember his name Reed she she could have had more book with him if she hadn't mm-hmm. had to do all the legwork at the front. But I wanted to see more of Nicholas from Reed. Like, I felt like he was just a new character. Like, it was supposed to be, like, soulmates with his, like, soul again. But I yeah. would have liked to see that more to feel more of a happily ever after with the yeah. couple we've been following the whole time instead of, like, well, there's this new guy now. And it felt very, like, oh, he's the new guy for her. 
because it happened in like five pages so yeah it was odd that we didn't get an epilogue there's very few historical romances that i can think of where we don't get an epilogue well it happened the same thing happened in the bircher small it was like a five page epilogue where they met in the future yeah and that was it and it's just like the, this yeah. is it like you just had this whole epic story and then you wrap it up in five pages Maybe that's how time travel romance is. It's like two interpretation at the end of like soulmates. I don't know. But I don't think she does a lot of epilogues. Like from what her earlier books, like before this one, hmm. I don't remember there being a lot of epilogues. Like I remember, like I have a bunch of them. And I reread one of them last uh, end of last year. But I haven't read the beginning part of like, cause this is all that Montgomery family. So this is like, yeah. I think this is book like 17 or something. something yeah. Like Crazy. This is, yeah. yeah. It's, it's all part of like the Montgomery. Yeah, yeah. The right. Part. Yeah, there's like oh, the medieval. Yeah. Medieval are there more time travel into the? Uh, and then it goes into the present day, I think. Or so it, maybe it kind of goes through different time periods. They all start yeah. like in medieval times. Yeah, like this is the first one, and it starts like in medieval times. Which one? And then that? they all go through. This one is like in the Wild West in like the Colorado West. What is it? Twin of Fire and Twin of Ice. Oh, yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah, they all go through like, you know, but I don't remember. And like these all having like big epilogues. It's like just kind of like the end, you know? Uh, yeah, like chapter 19. Yeah, they're just kind of. The end, yeah. The end. Like that was it, the end. <laughs> you You are over now, the end. Yeah, but I I do agree with this comment, like, just the possibility of, like, thinking, like, oh, their soulmates are continuing their romance story and the, not getting, like, the rest of it. It was kind of, like, an open-ended thing. It didn't bother me too much. Um, I still yeah, really, really enjoyed it. It was hard after we spent so much time with Nicholas already. Yeah. Oh, yeah. To then be like, oh, now she's... This confused me. <laughs> yeah. I didn't I was, it right over my head. I was like, why is she calling it... Colin when his name is mm -hmm. Nicholas. I don't know why she, he had two different names that I don't know. Was like, it I a middle like name? Because it was Reed's middle name. Yeah, I think it was like one of these early on things, like you know, when people are like lords or ladies and they have like 17 names. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. He had a really long name. Some really long name. Um I did feel bad for her. Like when after he's left, you know, and she goes back and she sees all these people and they're all like, oh, we never saw you with this person. And it's just like, I would think like, I'm a Looney Tune, right? Yeah. Like, yeah. I must have made this all up in my head because there's no evidence that this guy was like ever there. Yeah. And yeah. And Until the note. Work. Yes. Oh, yeah. There was a YA book like that where she had this whole epic romance with someone and then she was in the hospital for something and she kept referencing him and they thought she was like a like crazy like mentally ill because nobody remembered him existing that's horrifying it was like a time she travel was, she was able to warn him she was like no one's gonna remember me so don't freak out so i like that and how then he left his portrait i did love the portrait miniatures and how they like she had his and then Reed ended up having hers. Mm -hmm. So they were like mm -hmm. meant to have each other. I thought that was really sweet. Yeah. I thought that was cute. But then I was also kind of like, what parent lets their kid buy like some oil miniature of a person they don't know? <laughs> like, yeah. right? like I was thinking like my child is eight and he'd be like, I want this. I'd be like, no. <laughs> like, that's like bad parenting. <laughs> like, and then you're going to carry it around in this case for I don't know, 20 something years. Right. And that, you see this person? Like, she and Reed had a child. Someone uh, mentioned that she was in this book. Oh, in Sweet Liar. Oh. Yeah. And well, this was book 13, and there are 19 books. So yeah. they all do like keep going. Yeah. This is the first ever book I've read. So every book in this series has like from three to five thousand ratings, but this book has thirty five thousand ratings. Yeah, this is her. Most it was popular. the peak. Maybe it had really good marketing or something, or she was more established. I think. I think that's a few of it. I also think this one is the one, the first one that came out in hardcover. 
for, for her series of the Montgomery. Oh. So this is the first one that came out on hardcover. And then also this one is one of the first ones that if I remember correctly, and I could be wrong, has more all consent. Whereas mm -hmm. a lot of her earlier ones, like I in this series are a lot more like of the kind of traditional 1980s, I'm going to take you and this is it. And you have no choices. So mm -hmm. there was a lot of pining in this one. Like they yeah. waited. I mean, they had to, because if they like ended up getting together, they would have been sent back anyways. But yeah. And I mean, I do think this was also like the time period this one came out. So it was this 1989. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, I mean, I think that was a good, I don't know. I, I think this one, I mean, but this is just mine. So I, don't know. <laughs> I don't know. We still have Judith not writing her. <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> did you read any of those, Alicia? I did. I read the one with y'all. What is it? Once and always. Yeah. Once and, always. and I did not like that one. I hated it. I hated yeah. it. And then I read a bunch of her stuff in you know the 80s and 90s and you know it was it was fine i mean because really like so this one like opened up that whole genre to me of like historical romance especially this kind of like actual sex historical mm -hmm. romance because like before that i was reading like danielle Steele, and you know there's always just like the closed door like yeah he smiled and held hands fade to black so this one really like showed me that you could have other kinds of books like this so it like On sent me down the rabbit hole of you know this is like the book that created the reverse harem person i am today <laughs> 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 so thank you jude deborah but like it really did open up a lot of other avenues at the time when i was 16 17 of like lisa claypas and julie garwood and like kind of the older school i was not always a fan of mcnaught and just Okay. I know a lot of people love her. She was just not my favorite. Just not I mean, like, a lot of people. Favorite. Yeah, she's just not my favorite. I have like consistent Judith McNaught slander. Like I just have her <laughs> Kingdom of Dreams though. That one was so so good. but I am convinced that was like freaking ghost written or something. <laughs> or like no, no not, way. No, no way. No. no. <laughs> you all know I love her. Okay. I know. I know. I, I still need to read Whitney, my love. I'm gonna read that. Well, I like that it. Was my favorite. I mean, Lacey and I, Lacey and I went book shopping, and um, I was giving her some books. And I was like, "Take all of my Judith Rick novels, like all of them." She is just trash. <laughs> yes, I know people love her. I posted a video where I read like I want to say maybe three or four of her books, and I just like trashed them. I which I normally don't do. Um, and to this day, I will get comments, people like getting mad at me because they love her <laughs> pieces. Isn't it one an amnesia one? Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, God. That I one is the, one, the same <laughs> series, I think. I think that one is until like you. Kingdom of Dream. Yeah, until you, something like that. It's mm -hmm. in the Kingdom of Dreams series, it's like yeah. his descendants. It's interesting. Oh, is it? I thought it was his brother. No, Kingdom oh, of like, Yeah, yeah. Like, it was Whitney, oh, my love's brother. Yeah, Whitney, my love's brother, but they're the descendants. Oh, they're all in the same series? Yeah, they're all yeah, in the same it's series. It's the Westmoreland saga, because, like, the Kingdom of Dreams, it was, like, the medieval uh -huh. Westmoreland, and then in Whitney, my love, he's, like, the 1800s Duke. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then until you, he's, like, a Earl or Viscount, and then there's, um like, a he's short novella. novella. Yeah. That's one of their friends. Yeah, so it's, it is all connected, but Kingdom of Dreams is, like, the prequel to, like, how they got their title. Yeah, although it was written after Whitney, my love. Yes. Okay. Is it? Isn't it the first book, though, in the series? It is. It's technically, like, in timeline, yeah, it's the first, but she wrote it, like, I don't know, five years after. Um, oh. Interesting. No, don't be scared. Don't be scared. Just go into it. I feel like go into it knowing there's going to be some things that in modern current historical romance would be a hell no. But I mean, in Winnie My Love, the current edition, it's fine. There's nothing bad in it. So there's like options. Did they cut out the opening scene? They cut out the scene that was like dubious consent or would have yeah, been problematic. With them. Yeah. I don't. I don't know. I still feel like the intention and like the energy is still there, but I don't know. Her her heroes are very um alpha heroes. 
Yeah, mm-hmm. I love that. <laughs> yeah, but if you read any of hers, read Kingdom of Dreams. Like oh, yeah. Kingdom of Dreams is great. It's so that it's, would be like the peak. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, to answer Tori's question, Kingdom of Dreams, Kingdom of Dreams. and then the rest. Yeah. Well, or actually, actually, I actually a lot of people do Willow, like. So. Yeah. <laughs> a lot of people do like that one. I don't, but um, a lot of people do. Um. Oh yeah, Miss Widowis. What do we uh, say? Shanna was fun though. I will say I had a lot of fun with Shanna. <laughs> Trashing all these books. <laughs> They're fun, yeah. just like the one from last month. They are like so crazy and so mm-hmm. annoying, but so fun. Yeah. Get those plots today. And you, there are some like I that I agree with that. Like the plot is so bonkers, so wild, so dramatic. And I love that style of writing. Yeah. Um, I've read like half of The Wolf and the Dove. And I mean, it wasn't horrendous. I don't know. I've only, I like a long, long time ago, read The Flame and the Flower. Like a really long time ago. And then they're just too long. <laughs> That's true. Yeah, like, I like books are so long. long. I'm like, I can't, I cannot yeah. commit to that. Like, that's way too much for me. Someone mentioned about, someone talked about the time travel. Going back to um, the book we read, it reminded mm-hmm. me of Outlander where I'm like, how do you remember so much? Because she was like oh throwing goodness, out all these things. And I was like, I don't remember yeah. that. Mm-hmm. I would it just think like, if I time traveled, I would be like, just no no help. I'd be like, I don't yeah. remember what that I mean, is. At least in Outlander, Claire was a nurse, right? So but she, she knew least... so much about history. And like she oh, said that because true. of Frank, because he was like a professor, historian, whatever. But I'm mm-hmm. like, how do you remember, like, the dates and the exact places and, like, who wins? Like, how do you know all this stuff? Mm-hmm. Yeah. No. So her father was a historian. Even still, like, I do not remember that stuff. Our parents, when they're talking about history, no. I did. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I would be no help. No. 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 What did y'all yeah, think? I of was her just name? able to be like, yeah, don't use the leeches. That's not good. <laughs> <laughs> wash your hands. Wash your hands. Wash your hands. Yeah. I love how that was in the history books. Then he's like, his knowledge was so beyond his times because he no- he wanted everyone to wash their hands. Like if only you had told us this at the end of 2019 to the beginning of 2020, we could all have avoided this whole thing called COVID. <laughs> wash your hands. <laughs> What did y'all think of when she went back to 1594 or 1590 and he didn't know her? I was shocked. I was like, yeah. Oh. But then oh, they had to no. fall in love all over again. It felt just like this epic romance that they had. I know, but I actually like that because I didn't even like Nicholas in present day. I thought he was so like, I really didn't feel the love between them. Mm-hmm. Like all of a sudden they were just in love and I didn't feel that chemistry, but That's I true. actually felt it in the past i agree with that yeah he was a little bit more romantic the second when they met that time but like the minute they meet he's like with another girl oh yeah <laughs> yeah yeah i had to reread that. i was like wait what were they what what was he just doing yeah i think it was interesting that she's like trying to stop him from like doing the whole table thing with arabella and she's just like goes in there and she's like stops it you know like but he, he was definitely it. He was definitely right, but he like had admitted it. I think like he had said, "Oh, there's something else we need to talk about." The um, you know, he had said like, "Oh, when he came back when he was in 1980 about like how he had had all these women and whatever." And um, let's talk about like his baby that was hanging on a peg. (laughs) How much of this is accurate? I have no idea. Actually, I did not Google any of this afterwards because I felt like, why would she make this up? I know that's so out there that it's like maybe it actually did happen. And like, well, and you like wrap it tight enough and it won't cry anymore. I'm like, yeah. well, yeah, because it, it's, it's like you can't breathe. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh my God. The way that like even his mom said, like, you shouldn't get attached to children because they die. Yeah. I'm like, well, maybe they die because you put them on a peg. Yeah. Like, and just leave them. <laughs> and that's that's what happens. So I did not remember that part of the book. And so when I hit it in my reread, I was like, ooh. I was like, yeah. That, that doesn't make him look good. Like, you're trying to be I this very like rom- romantic hero. And then all of a sudden you're like, oh yeah, I have a kid. Right. 
You didn't mention yeah, this right. and you're in like 1980. You haven't mentioned it in like the month that she's been right. there. Yeah. He just mentioned the kid that died. Yeah. Like Arabella's kid. That was his. Yeah. Which he wasn't even sad about either, which was odd. No. But then and I'm, he has to have more kids out there. With how much he slept around, mm-hmm. he had to have more kids. There had to be. And so why was this the only one that I guess He's like, like, Oh, and I sent the mom off. She's gone. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. And so, like the um, the brother, I kind of wanted there to be a little bit more of like the brother Kit, the older brother. I wanted there to be a little bit more of the like jealousy. Like I kind of wanted Nicholas or Colin to have more like jealous reaction and be like just more angry that she was kind of like having she was kind of flirting with the, the brother kind of the brother was liking her and whatever. I, I wanted that to be a little bit. Um, yeah. <laughs> maybe, maybe he did, the I don't know, he did it with his friend's wife. So <laughs> couldn't see him doing it with other people. No, no, I, I agree. But I, agree. I felt like Lacey did about him in the present day where I was like, Oh, he's fine. But like, I don't know if I'm really buying this, like, epic romance between them mm-hmm. so when they went back and she like noticed how attractive kit was i was like oh is she gonna fall for the brother now and it's like yeah. that gonna be a thing and she's gonna like leave nicholas behind but no yeah. <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah that's what i was kind of hoping i was like maybe that'll happen no 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 it didn't it didn't happen um i am glad that he like lived but then i do wonder like through this whole thing I thought if you messed up time, like you messed up the whole space time continuum and like everything unraveled and the planet exploded. So here she's really changed so much. Like this guy didn't die. The kid on the peg didn't die. Like all these things. Like, so what else changed in the world? Right. Like what that butterfly flapped its wings in 1590, 1590. Yeah. She couldn't have just affected them. Yeah. So just I take thought, it for what it is. <laughs> don't overthink the time travel. <laughs> yeah, don't, don't, don't overthink the time. It's not realistic. It gets better throughout the end of the book. It gets better. Yeah. 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 The end does get a little better. Yes, I agree. I know. Oh, my God. But, like, and she was taking her, like, showers in that fountain and did not know that, like, tons of people were watching her every day. <laughs> <laughs> were they hiding really well? Like, you didn't know? I don't know, but can you imagine like how like dirty she's like, I see all these dirty people. I'd be like, oh my God, I want to take a shower too. I'd be like trying to figure it out. I mean, yeah, I would, I would try to get, I would pay somebody to turn that crank as well and and make that water happen. But it also felt like a lot of the things in her tote never went away. It was like the endless bottle of cold medicine, (laughs) endless bar of soap. Like, yeah. How many showers can you take with this one bar of soap? <laughs> I mean, it just I mean she was only there for like six weeks. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. It just felt like a long time. Like, yeah. It felt like she was there for a long time because I feel like the whole time I was just like, are you peeing in the chamber pot? Like ha- as like a person going back in time. Like, think about the comforts that you have. And then you're like, okay, now I'm going to sleep on this straw lice filled bug. That were like, uh, that are like <laughs> essentially non existent now. Yeah. Like, yeah. And you're like, ew. ew. Yeah, I mean, that's why I said it'd be easier to go into the future because I, I would just die in the past. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like, I would just give up. I would just, yeah. give up. like, whatever. Let's just give up. Are you <laughs> lazy? <laughs> And also, like, how realistic this was, like, when she went into town, and she was, like, everybody's dirty and disgusting and, like, sick, and there's, like, rotting, like, scars on people, and, like, no one showered, like, in their, even their lifetime, they throw everything in the streets. I'm just, like, that's so gross. But, like, I, was that accurate? Yeah, it was. Yeah, it definitely was. It was disgusting. (laughs) No wonder nobody lived that long yeah right that's yeah so disgusting. no one lived that long and then i thought it was really interesting when they were talking about like the the classes right like how each the mom was you know this class and then she had a servant and then the servant had a servant yeah and like this 
a whole classes of it. When you're looking at them, she's talking about like, oh, they're eating these ex exquisite dinners with like meats and all this stuff. And then these people come with like bolts of fabric. And then like next door, <laughs> they're like, you know, losing limbs to gangrene. So yeah, I thought that was, that was interesting. And I really thought, I really wanted, even the first time I read this, and again now, like I wanted Douglas to have a little bit more compassion. And I wanted her to like go and show these people like, look, you can wash your hands a little bit. Yeah, or, instead of just running away. because Instead just of just saying like, I don't want to see this anymore. Yeah. That's That's my picnic on the, on the green, you yeah. know? It's just, yeah. Mm -hmm. I wanted, just... yes. I wanted her to have more compassion. It was interesting because like when you read like medieval romances that are like only set in like medieval time, it's very much romanticized because nobody wants to say, hear yeah. about yeah, yeah, nobody wants to hear about all those that. sorts of things. But in reality, that was probably a little bit more historically accurate. Yeah. This is also that last one, because like I watching, I was gonna compare it to Outlander, like everyone thought Claire was a witch and like mm -hmm. she was going to be killed for being a witch. I'm surprised no one took it that far especially mm -hmm. his mom yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah again she just took the pill like yeah like alicia said they just took it without any questions no questions yeah. like and that, like, they're not showering washing their hands but they're gonna take this unknown substance right they're gonna take this and then they're gonna like just listen to her sing songs and i'm like is that really how people earned a spot in this household like during that time she just comes in and it's like i mean entertainment yeah, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I'm gonna sing yeah. you a song. I don't know. The mom felt very much like a queen, though, to me. Mm. Like with everything she got to dictate. Yeah. What was? What was she called? She was a she was a lady, right? She wasn't. Is there a, a female equivalent to an earl, though? Because he was an earl. Oh, I don't know. Lady? Like, is there's viscount, viscountess, mm -hmm. baron, baroness, march? Are they a march and a marchioness? But for an earl, wouldn't that be for a marquess? True. It, true. What are yeah. they? Or maybe they're just a lady. Let's see what it. Let's see what it is. Well, and then at the end, the mom was like, "You need to marry this guy, or you need Nicholas. You need to marry this girl." And I'm just like not amused by her anymore. She's too weepy. She's too sad. Oh, so, like, a countess. We heard of me. We heard a of me. Oh, a countess. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, interesting. Yeah. She was. She reminded me of the queen from Bridgerton, how she was just like, you're boring me now. Like, leave. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Maybe. Interesting. Well, you'd think it would be the equivalent of an earl, though, because everything else, like, matches together. Yeah. yeah. But it's kind of like, I think earl and count are kind of on the same level. I think that's why. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. Interesting. I did like think it was funny though how he was trying to explain to her how important marriage was because like we see that all the time in historicals like you marry for money or for alliances mm -hmm. and she's like no you marry for love and he's like well how'd your family make their money he's like <laughs> they awesome. married into it so like that was a huge thing mm -hmm. in history so that was funny what did we think about him wanting her to stay and be like his mistress I feel like that's realistic. Yeah. I feel like that was like what would have been. It that happened so much in older historical. Yeah. Yeah. Like yeah. almost like like Judith McNaught, Kathleen E. Wood West, all of them trying to make the woman the mistress. Well, even isn't that what happened in Benedict's book for the Bridgertons? Like he yeah. wanted to. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It happens, it happens in a few places books too. It happens in a few books too. Yeah. Wow. If, it not, if, you're, if you're not the right person, you know, yeah. they can't marry you. Yeah. Yeah, they, yeah. they figure it out in the end always <laughs> yeah they do they do they figure it out it's yeah. just, they yeah. never end with her actually being the mistress could you imagine <laughs> but I was gonna say, I was gonna end in the moments, like that satisfies of them just being the mistress <laughs> they're together what? <laughs> and then you know he just goes and with that one woman every once in a while his like wife mm -hmm. and then he comes back to the mistress I Right, and she's like, wait, so you're going to still go sleep with your yeah. wife? Yeah. Like, no. No. Did you think this true? Until she gets pregnant, so you have, like, a, an heir, and then I'll just be on the side here. But that's right. what happened. All the time. No. No. I, yeah. It, yeah, that was not my favorite part of the book. Yeah. But, I mean, like, in their minds, they thought, like, 
there's no way I could marry you because I have to do have this other marriage. Yeah, yeah so that was the society at the time. So Benedict, Nicholas, Simon and what happened when I'm, he was entitled, but most of these men are entitled and it just was not a thing to marry someone of a lower class. Yeah. It was not done. It was very taboo. So being a mistress to them was just as important or the only thing they could really offer them. Yeah. And some people like they, a lot of people probably wanted to be mistresses too. Right. Yeah. Yeah. A lot like, of responsibility. Carriages yeah. and all mm -hmm. this stuff. A lot less responsibility in that part, you know? I thought it was interesting when the, I think the mom said, the crotchety mom was like, just keep her on the side, or I would have let you keep her on the side. Like, she could be your wife's lady's maid, attending maid or something. And it was well, like, yeah. <laughs> so, but didn't it happen, I feel like, with like royalty a lot, is like they were sleeping around with the servants who were serving like their wives. But she even said, she's like, well, my first husband did that. Yeah. And I was like, whatever yeah well that's what and that makes me uh think of the show the about king henry the eighth yes um, yeah so his wives because he had like a bajillion of them were some of his original wives as ladies mates yeah i mean you could be in society in different ways you could still go to like the opera you're not going to go to like the balls and stuff like that but mm -hmm. um and like in the beginning in the beginning where he's like writing the little letter or he's getting a letter from his mom and he hears her crying and he like travels across time. It's like, what did he think was going to happen when he started rising this army? Like he just didn't actually think like I should petition the queen. Cause she's just so nice. She's never going to know. And it's like, yeah, you really do. Yeah. You like signed yeah, your own death dumb. on that one. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, I thought that one was, but characters do not make the smartest decisions so that we have a plot. <laughs> there you go. Smart, we wouldn't have our plot. <laughs> yeah. It's all romance reasons. <laughs> romance reasons. Yeah. And it's like they could have, she maybe could have only gone to like one castle to like try to find some of these answers. She instead was traveling of like, all over. All over yeah, instead of like, we were going to go to th three castles, one that you built and then another one. And then we're going to stay in the Spenimer. I was like, maybe all this could have been condensed into one castle. Like, mm -hmm. could he have found the box behind this castle? Maybe. Just saying. Save us. Save us a little bit. But. Yeah. But I wish we had more time in the past than we did. I think like 200 pages were in the present day, which is over you. half of the book. Yeah. And like that's maybe. when it got a little redundant and boring. Mm -hmm. Also, mm -hmm. like, why was he flirting with the present day Arabella didn't she even have the same name I was like why was he like trying to get with her still that was confusing to me was she the one at the bar no she was the one at the the castle like there oh, was the oh, the, oh yeah the okay okay yeah. yeah with the okay with the guy with the, the historian Lee yes historian the yeah, Lee. I think she was writing a book too yeah and like she would come in and like distract him with technology so he wouldn't sleep with her and i was like but why is he like entertaining the idea of sleeping with her when obviously like you guys have a thing i was very very confused yeah. by that dynamic yeah i feel like it had to parallel like she had to become this pair have the parallel of like here's arabelle from yeah. now to like 19 or to 1500s and i feel like she had to have this this other character I didn't okay. understand where the character of the other the historian came in to like the Lee. Yeah. yeah. I thought he was kind of a random character, like throwaway character. That yeah. he could have just. Okay. But he could flirt with her, but then he was like literally in her bedroom with a shirt off. Like that yeah. is a whole other line that he was not flirting. It felt like he would actually go through with it if she hadn't interrupted them. Yeah. That's naked. It's like That's maybe not weird. Yeah. Well, and Douglas didn't seem that mad. Oh, she was mad, but yeah. like if there's this guy you're, having all these conversations and like whatever with and you're staying together and riding tandem bikes through the countryside. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> like, and you walk in and he's like half naked with this chick and she's in some little lacy thing. I would be right. more mad than here. Let me show you a calculator. Like, <laughs> right. I'd be like, Oh no, we're, we're going to, we're going to talk about this. My friend, yeah. you know, like I would yeah. be way more mad than I think she was. I think she very much let him get off easy. In the yeah. Whole but I think like that last 
comment is a point like they did enjoy messing with each other and pushing each other's buttons and making each other jealous which is mm -hmm. annoying but they like to do that with one another yes but i think that's like a common historical or like romance reasons thing like i'm gonna push you away but then i really want you to be with me so i'm gonna like push your buttons on something else and you know i think that's like a common kind of thing you yeah. know especially when he was like i'm gonna tell you that i loved my wife because I don't want you to fall in love with me. So then you get hurt. Cause I'm really sparing you the pain. It's like, yeah. I'm really like, no. Lettuce. <laughs> Why was his wife <laughs> named Lettuce? And then she <laughs> pronounced like Latisse or something. But then she said, why'd yeah. you just call me Lettuce? People call me carrot sometimes, but, and I'm like, oh my God. <laughs> like, but then I don't understand also like when he was like hugging her in their sleep, he called her Lettuce. Which was that like on purpose then? I didn't get why he would call her let I can't I think he was doing it on purpose in his like, let me push you away so you don't okay. fall in love with yeah, me. I think so too. Scenario. Yeah. Yeah. What a dumb Wait. name. Like I'm sure lettuce was probably uh, a real Douglas name. Is like, like a, a common name too. I was wondering that. Like that's Douglas. an odd name yeah. for a girl. Yeah. He mentions it at the end because um when they're on that tour in the present. And mm -hmm. he had like mentioned Douglas and someone's like, oh, maybe he didn't like women. And she's like, Douglas was a female name back in medieval times. So. Oh, okay. That whole conversation. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, but also I feel like this was common in the eighties, how fat phobic this book was and how like the oh, daughter, God, yeah. like, he's just a fat little girl. And I'm just like, you're, she's like 12, mm -hmm. 12 first yeah. of all. And like, yeah. they always use fat to describe the evil characters. Like, every, I feel like this is very common. Yeah. Yeah. And a lot of the descriptions and like fat and whore and like all of these descriptions yeah. about pretty much all the women in this book, I was like, that's yeah. just weird. Yeah. It yeah. I think that's part of the thing. It's like she had to make her outwardly as unattractive as the time yes. period, you know, would say, would in inwardly she was really a raging bitch. Mm -hmm. Like I don't know. And I didn't like how they she kept comparing um well, I don't like how they, she kept comparing, like, Douglas was like, I don't want to be cold like his first wife. Mm -hmm. Like, saying, like, Robert's first wife was so cold. And it's like, well, maybe because he's a jerk. Yeah. <laughs> the problem's like, not her. Yeah. Like, the problem yeah. isn't you. The problem yeah. is him. Yeah. Like, I I don't, I mean, I don't like it in, in any kind of romance novel or any novel where the woman takes on these things that these men are saying as problems. <laughs> Mm -hmm. And they're like, well, it's my fault. I'm, mm -hmm. I must be cold because that's how he's treating me. It's like, no, you are not. You're fine. Mm -hmm. He's a jerk. Yeah. And so I, I don't, I mean, I don't like that, but that's, you know, what it is, it is what it is. <laughs> I mean, so would you guys, because this was your first Jude Deborah. So would you read another one? I would. I like the I writing. Bought, mm -hmm. I bought so many of her books. So I now have to. I feel yeah. like I have to. Yeah, I, I like I her. All of the Montgomerys. And I yeah, I read like from the beginning. You own all nineteen of them. Wow, almost all of them. Most, oh, wow. mostly just the older ones with the original covers and yeah. backs. And yeah, mm -hmm. some of those. I will say with some of those older ones, there is like some content warning. So like, yeah, be prepared. Like, like this one. Yeah, it's like a full on, full on rape. Um. But, I mean, they're of the time, and they're super interesting. I mean, I, you know, I read them years and years and years ago, so I like them. But she does have a series that's, like, a um, it's called, it's, like, more recent. It's, like, Days of Gold or Summer Something. <laughs> I'd have to look it up. I can post it to my story. It's a more contemporary. It's not historical. That is really good, too. I, have, I cannot remember the name of it now. Yeah, we've talked we've talked about that that um, a lot of these like old historical romance authors that were so popular they tr tr transitioned into like contemporary or suspense. Yeah, Judith McNaught wrote a ton of contemporary books. Yeah, Judith, what is? I really like do Garwood. like Julie Garwood. She's got the um the, the, the suspense the series. That's for the series. Yeah, but. What's it called? Uh, yeah, I really liked that one. If you like are not into historical romance, but you wanted like still to read like Jude Devereaux, it's oh my god, what is it called? It's by series. Here it is. 
It's not the Montgomery Tiger. It is. It is the Edeline series. It's like Days of Gold, The Scent of Jasmine, Promises, Lavender Morning, Scarlet Night. It's more contemporary. And I really, yes, you're right, Nishi. Nishi is right. Days yes. of Lavender. Your lav Days of Gold, Lavender Morning. Like they're all like, you know, those kinds of names. But they they're good. Yeah. A lot of people do mention this book by Judith McNaught as yeah. it's my favorite. I need, to, I need to read it. I think it's like an eight. Is this one that's the age gap romance? Oh, uh, it was the second chance romance. And that's oh, okay. about it. Is no, it is an age gap. It is a second chance romance, but I think there's an age gap. Okay. Yeah, that one's a lot of people's favorite. Yeah. People like when I posted about made that video where I read Judith McNaught's, a lot of people recommended perfect. I didn't know that Stephanie Lawrence went into mystery books. Oh, it's contemporary though. Yeah, it's contemporary. Uh-huh. Okay. We've got like um it's name? long though. It's like six hundred pages. Nora Roberts, who writes also as J.D. Robb, right? Oh, she wrote right. some of those mystery thrillers. Is it mystery thrillers? I don't know. But I don't think she's Robb. ever written historical, has she? No. no. She's no. Like one of the, yeah. I, I mean, I love Nora Roberts. I have one yeah, of her I read my one. first one, my first Nora Roberts, because I only read J.D. Robb, but I read yeah. my first Nora Roberts, and it was amazing. I loved it. I don't remember what it was called, but it's like the hero, he's Native American, and he um he made his wealth by investing in like casinos and like some sort of amusement park things like that mm -hmm. it was so good like he was kind of like a blueprint for Rourke I felt like so I fell in love with him oh Rourke from the in death series yeah yeah that's the only series I've read by her but I have like dozens of Nora Roberts books it's just I like, don't know where to start I, I have no idea where to start there's I have Rebellious, which is what someone just commented. That's the Highlander one. Oh, she has one? Wow. Yeah. But that's the only one I have. And that's the only one I'm interested in reading. Wait, doesn't she have, like, the Mac the Mackenzie Brides or something Brides? No, Nora Roberts. The, she has, like, it's the Forever Brides or something. And it's, like, they are, um, or for, for Vision in White. They yeah, run, like, a bed and breakfast. And they yeah, do weddings. Yeah, like, that's the. No, not that one. Let me grab it. One second. Okay. Then. Uh, I'm not sure. I think she has one more. Oh, I don't know. Okay, make your shelves fall. <laughs> I know. Oh, all I know. No Never mind. mind. I don't know where it is. Her oh, books are not mounted. Her shelves are not. So, like, are they like double stacked? Jeez. Oh, they're triple stacked, yeah. Mine are triple stacked, too. Mine, Mine are triple stacked. So these shelves right here, they're triple stacked because the, the shelves are not bookshelves. They're, like, entertainment shelves, so they go really deep. But they're, like Jessica said, they're not mounted, so they tend to kind of top the forward. <laughs> oh, terrified no. every time you start touching them. <laughs> they all fall over. I don't remember what book. I, it wasn't where I was looking. Mm -hmm. uh, gosh, I think she has one more, though. McGregor series, the McGregor series. Oh, I'm pretty sure that's. Is that historical? Though? Oh no, it does look contemporary. Never mind. Yeah, like of all the books she's written, like hundreds. There's only one. Mm -hmm. Has she yeah, not? I feel like she's hit like a thousand at some point. She writes so mm -hmm. many books. Like three releases a year, at least. That's great. And they're all traditionally published. And the In Death series, though, too. Mm -hmm. Oh God, that like, series is like on book fifty or something. Like yeah. that is crazy. <laughs> I have not been able to like rally myself to start those. So I just stick to her like traditional like Nora Roberts ones. <laughs> They're good. They're very interesting. Like the the world it's set in is very interesting because it's supposed to be this futuristic world. Yeah. yeah. But it's not so futuristic when you're reading it now. Um and it's kind they're of very interesting. Blind cars, right? Oh, that's true. They have um, cars. But I, I love can, it. I love the series. I can see how it can get old though, like after a few books. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, if you like mystery, there's always like a new mystery that is actually really interesting. Mm -hmm. I just the romance have to is what I'm there for. Roars oh and yeah, are amazing. Like yeah. for fifty one of the best books ever. What for fifty books though? 
Yeah. I don't know, I feel like that'll get boring after 50 bucks. Yeah. But it's, I don't know, Rourke is just a special hero. Yeah. I mean, for Rourke, I could read 50 books. He's just a special hero, for sure. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. Okay, I just want to say yes, a Sugar Daddy, that is one of my favorite, favorite, like, top five mm-hmm. books ever. I love, I adore that really? book. Really? I oh yeah, I read the first two. I like. Them. I would definitely I say, them. yeah, I would say like maybe even top three. Like I'm obsessed. Oh, with that's surprising though. Wow, a lot of people love book two the most. I know people like Blue Eyed Devil, but I don't yeah. know. I love the hero. I mean, the heroine in Sugar Daddy, and I also like love triangles. So, oh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I liked those. There was one. I didn't like the last one in that series, the Lisa Claypus one. So if you've only read one and two, I think you're fine. Um, I would say four is like my least favorite. Is that like Brown Eyed Girl or something? Brown Eyed That's something? the one where he's the photographer and he's in an accident. Oh, yeah. And yeah, I didn't like that one. I felt like that one needed like something. It was not good. <laughs> read that last comment. I know, like they would be so boring to me watching the same couple. For 50 books. Yeah. But I don't know. Like, Lacey, how deep are you into the series? Oh, I'm only on book nine. So. Okay. I know that Spencer is deep. Like, she's like 20 books into the series oh, and wow. she's still obsessed with it. Yeah. I mean, I wouldn't yeah. read it all, you know, back to back, all 50, you know, because that them. would get old really fast. But I mean, um, one, yeah. release, one or two releases a year. I feel like that's totally doable. Yeah. Although yeah. this series is not a romance, it reminds me of like SVU that has like 50 bajillion yeah. students, but you yeah. still watch it because like you love the characters, mm-hmm. but it also has like a large existential plot that keeps you mm-hmm. interested. Yeah. And I yeah. think she, she said that she would end the series when Eve gets pregnant and she still hasn't. But I think she's in the book. It's only been a couple years, I think, since book one. They, they, the timeline is really short. Yeah, yeah. Because it's like cases. It follows their different cases. Mm-hmm. I don't know. It is a really good series. I don't know how we got to that series. Yeah. It's kind of historical. <laughs> Someone brought up Nora Roberts. So. Oh, oh yeah. this is me, probably. Off topic, you know. The last one, Brown Eyed Girl, is terrible. I agree, Monica. The last one is terrible. <laughs> <laughs> I, yeah, I agree with you on that one faux show was bad yeah but I would love if Lisa Klebus wrote more contemporaries because I just think those no. first two books are no those first two books are gold. gold they are gold I just <laughs> but then she's gonna turn and only write contemporary like all those other authors no she no, can't she can't no. she's only written like a handful of contemporary books yeah um yeah, ah, they don't do it well I can't help you there, my friend. Um, I have yes. read many books. Annie Song by Katherine Anderson. Okay. Matt Martin. Let's talk about um, later books. Midnight yeah. Angel. Midnight Writer, <laughs> sorry. Midnight Writer by Kat Martin. That one is amazing. Well, that's Western? So yeah. I read a Lorraine Heath Western and I could care less about. <laughs> I, like I only like the older Westerns for some yeah, reason. It's like that Texas I read. Destiny or something. Texas. I read the Lady and the Outlaw. Okay. I yeah, think the Tess, Tess Lasso one that I like. That what is the Lorraine Heath we're reading for this book club? Is it Texas, Texas Destiny? Destiny? Oh, <laughs> we are reading that one. Oh God, is it not good? Well, I, hope no, I liked it. Oh. I liked it. I like Lorraine Heath, so I, I liked it. Um, if you like Western historical romance, um, so it depends on how she Texas Western is pretty good. I didn't know she wrote Western. The one um, she has one, everything, I feel like. Yeah, this one is like they're in um they're in is this the one where they're in Houston? I guess this isn't as Western. There is one of these Montgomery ones that she, they're in the West. Maybe it's not that one. One of them, they're in Colorado in one of these. Um, If you like Westerns that are not necessarily all super historical um, and don't have a ton of steamy times, Diana Palmer wrote like 
a bajillion Western mm. romances. She's she's known for her Westerns. Yeah, they're not yeah. always, some of them are like historical, like, like oh, 1980s. Okay. <laughs> but they're not necessarily like, you know, the 1800s. Um, yeah. But I like went through a phase where like, yeah, I read Diana Palmer for like a minute. Yeah, there's some Julie Gardner ones. Although the one that I read wasn't, I don't know if you can call it Western if it's set in the East Coast. Or like the woods, Appalachia, I think it was set in. Mm. Mm-hmm. Interesting. Prince Charming. I mean, if it was set around that time period of like the wild, wild west, mm-hmm. maybe so can. Um, Texas Destiny is soon. It's our May book, I believe. It's not yes. next month, but the month after. And then right? it's Annie's song. Yes, yes, yes. We have. Honestly, I totally mm-hmm. forgot what April was, and I just looked, and I was like, "Oh, we're reading a Johanna Lindsay." I'm excited. A Scottish yeah. Joanna Lindsay. A Gentle Feuding. I love this cover to pieces. It is one of my favorite covers. I never um, noticed, though. Like, they cut him off. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. They can't. They can't <laughs> but, yeah. That's a good one. I liked it. I read it a long, long time ago. Oh. <laughs> and it's short. It's only 327 pages. I know, compared to some of our previous books that were, like, (laughs) yeah. Yes. But we are picking our next three months soon after, so if you have any requests, maybe let us know, like, an author you want us to read or something. But I'm so nervous because we end up picking ones, and we're like, why did did we end up picking this? I know! (laughs) Like, um, after you read it? Yeah. Yes. Like, yeah. Connie Mason. It's just, like, how that book. There's it's a few. Cute. It's a fun it's a book. Cover. Uh, Judith Bethany. Who else did we not like? Um, I'm I trying to think remember. remember. There were some good ones, though. There were some good ones. Yeah. Is this your all's first Joanna Lindsay with the gentle feeding? Or? No. Read, um, Love Only Once, and that was so good. Okay. Yeah, that was like a year ago when we read that one, and that one, oh, that was amazing. Okay. Yeah, this is a good one. It's a good one. They're all. I need to read more from her. Yeah. Yeah. There's a few of hers I don't like that I would probably not recommend yeah. that y'all. Me too. Like, <laughs> well, the one Samantha <laughs> read. Huh? What's one? Nash Fire. Fire. Uh, what is it called? It's part of her Viking. Is Fires of Winter or Secret Fire? I get those two confused. It's fires of winter because I always say like it's a trash fire. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. it's awful. Yeah, that one. I didn't like a pirate's love. I, I did not like that one. No, and I did not. I did not like Hearts of Flame. So I, I am, loved Hearts oh, of Flame. I, I know. Like I'm one. in the. I'm in the minority. I, of Hearts of Flame. I, I didn't like love Hearts of Flame, of Flame, but it wasn't like horrible. It was okay. It wasn't like as offensive as a pirate's love. <laughs> a pirate's love, like the only. But that one was one of her earliest. It was like a. Yeah. No, Fires of Winter was also offensive. Like, on page, the heroine says that the hero rapes her. Like, it is just... That's all a pirate's love was. Yeah. Yeah, it's not a good book whatsoever. I do want to finish her Mallory Anderson series, though, because so far, that has been my favorite from her. Mm -hmm. Oh, is Amanda Quick coming up? That's a good question, Michi. Uh, No. She is not. We had an Amanda Quick. We read Ravished. I don't know which other one. Another one. Her books are so good. Her books are good. I want to read a Mary Below, but Jessica says she's boring. <laughs> <laughs> Everything I've read by her has been so boring. Yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm on team Jessica on this one. Yeah. I, think she, I think they can be kind of boring. Yeah. Oh, dang. I've heard so many good things about her. I think they can be kind of boring. What about um, Elizabeth Boyle? I don't know if she's historical enough. Oh. oh. Newer. I think she might be too new. Yeah. Maybe. Yeah. That was my thing because I really wanted to read an Elizabeth Hoyt, but her books are mm-hmm. after that. She yeah. Um, mm-hmm. we'll probably do another Lisa Klepis because that's mm-hmm. like an easy pick. Like we know for sure, like we're probably gonna like it. Thank you. Look, three people in a row said Mary, <laughs> <laughs> and I was really fighting for Mary Below. Okay, we will not pick her. Oh, Teresa Medeiros. I did mention Teresa Medeiros. Yeah. We wanted her. That would be a good one. Um, books. I don't know much about that one though. But didn't she have really a vampire know. one? Did she? I don't I know. So like a vampire historical. That would be really cool. Um, Julie Garwood. I would read another Julie Garwood for sure. Mm-hmm. 
so good. All right. We're for sure not reading Mary Below. Wait, wait, wait. I mean, if you want to, I can give her another shot, but yeah, I don't want I don't want to put the people through this. <laughs> like it. Oh yes, you guys should totally do a Christina Dodd. Yes. Oh. Do those. Oh, okay. Which one should we read? Castles Did in the air, the one with the three arms. Yeah, that's oh. what Did you guys read that one? The misprint. Okay. Christina Dodd should we read? I don't think oh, it has God. good reviews though. I'd have to look back and see. I have she does have vampire circles, you're right. Or Catherine Coulter. Catherine Coulter, I think, is boring too. So I would not I'm sorry, Michi. I think she's boring. Like she doesn't yeah. have good reviews. Oh, Catherine Coulter really had a three point six rating. I yeah. think we've said no to Catherine Cutler because we know for sure she has a lot of dubious consent in her books. So we're just going to yeah. skip her for so now. Oh, I have a lot um, of Karen Robards, though. Jessica, have you read Ransom? No. That would be a good one. Has, oh, but didn't that come out it? after 2000? Oh, maybe. Let's check. Oh, maybe. No, that was good. That one's another one with two romances. Yes. Yes. Which I really wanted them to have their own books. Yeah, it's I know. Too. Yeah. So I was, I was annoyed. Oh, yeah, that's, that that's part of the reason why I didn't. Nineteen ninety nine. Oh, okay. So we might read Ransom. Maybe if we do, Justin, you have to join us. That would push me to read it finally. Sorry, what were you saying, Lacey? Like, Ransom. I, I didn't love it as much as The Secret. I think mm -hmm. that's book one mm -hmm. because it was really, really long, and then the two yeah. romances. I kind of wanted more for me. Yeah. Because I feel like in that one, we had followed the two heroes from like book one. They had kind of yes. been in the background and I wanted, I wanted more than yeah. what, what they got. Mm -hmm. but, but it was still really fun. I mean, it's classic Julie Garwood. So good. I have heard of Samantha James. I do have a couple of her books selfishly because it's my initials and I'm just like, oh, that's cool. <laughs> <laughs> Um, Lindsay Sands, I feel like this author's problematic, or am I imagining things? I thought she was more vampires, which... Yeah, she oh, does, Lindsay. but she has... She's like, paranormal, Highlanders. but she has... Yeah. Highlander romances? Maybe I'm... Wow. Maybe I'm they're old enough, though. Oh. She has the one with the hair with the glasses that Lisa loved. Oh, Love and Love. That one okay. is really cute. I really yeah. like that one. Cassie Max Rogers too. Oh, Cassie, I have oh. a lot of Cassie Maxwell. Thank what you. about a, um, a Mary Jo Putney? Oh yeah, I have a lot of Mary Jo Putney. Putney, Putney, and I'm not sure how you say P-U-T-N-E-Y. She always has wonderful step backs, and like mm -hmm. she, her older ones, I have again not read one in a really long time, but I don't remember there being anything too too crazy in them. Yeah, maybe we'll read one of her. I am interested in a Teresa Medeiros. I don't know why. I've heard a lot of good things that about That one her. looks really good. It has some, yeah. like, so-so reviews, but that one, he, like, tormented her when they were young, and now it's their romance. Yeah. Um, I do know the answer to Monica's question. Um, Go uh, Chris Lee Cole did write historical, but they, I, they were, I think they were after 2000. Yeah. Um, they're called, like, the Captain of Pleasure, the Prince of Pleasure. There's, like, a three, there's three of them. Yes. And yeah, they're super brothers. good. I would totally mm -hmm. recommend them. Like, but I also love Cressley Cole. So like she mm -hmm. could do no wrong in my, mm -hmm. in my world. So I think they're great. And she also has a Scottish series. If you wanted Scottish, I think they're called. Oh yes. If you deceive, if you. If you desire. If you yeah, desire. Her Highlander, her Highlander yeah. series. Something else. Yeah. There's three of them. Yeah. They're super good. But I don't think, yeah, that I think they're too new for for your for your thing. Yeah. Anyway, uh, we did read a Beatrice Small in December. It was okay. It wasn't. It was weird. It was a lot. <laughs> yeah, it was kind of wild. So I think maybe not. Maybe not a Beatrice Small. I would read another Amanda Quick. I would read another Johanna Lindsay or Lisa Kleypas. Those are some of the authors we've already read that I could say like, yeah, I would pick that up again. Cool, we got a lot of good good recommendations. A lot of that like, you guys helped us out. <laughs> we'll see what we pick for the <laughs> um, yeah, well thank you all so much for having me. Yes, thank you for joining. It was so much yeah, fun. fun. 
talk about like one of my favorite books ever. <laughs> this was fun. I will say like we've had some fun ones recently. Yeah. The stories are a little bit more wild than what we normally get to enjoy, like with modern historicals. Yeah. And I think, you know, it's like with any book, you like think back to when you actually read it the first time. Mm -hmm. Like if you're rereading something, it's like, okay, I remember being like 16 in my bedroom in my parents' house and like having this book and being like, oh my God, this is scandalous. Amazing. You know, like this is scandalous. And then being like to my mom, like, you have to take me to the library and like checking books by this author out in the library and be like, are you sure? Like, <laughs> is your mother with you? You know, like, you know, so you just, I don't know, you just have like an emotional attachment to some when you reread. So I'm yeah, glad everyone liked it, got through the boring parts. <laughs> yeah. It seemed like everyone did like this one. It was like three stars and above. So it was a good pick. I know, I was worried. I was like, oh, God, don't trash my book. <laughs> All right, so we'll close it out. Um, next month, we will have our live show on Jessica's channel. We're going to be reading Johanna Lindsay's Gentle Feuding. And then we will have our next few book picks on our Instagram when we decide them in a couple days. So, yeah, thank you, Lacey and Alicia, for joining us. Thank you. Thank you. Hope everyone has a good weekend. Or not weekend, week. Today's <laughs> Bye. <laughs>